Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, it's Mr Hegarty here and in this video we're going to write ratios in the form 1 to n or n to 1. So let's start off with knowledge I need for you from this video. Pause the video and double check you can evaluate things like 16 divided by 5. Right, I would expect you to do this by short division. You would have probably written down 16 here and you would have said divided by 5. Does 5 go into 1? No, but carry that. Uh, 10 into this column. Does 5 go into 16? Yes indeed it does. It goes in 3 times. Um, and put your decimal point there because 3 times 5 is 15. That leaves you with remainder 1. Does 5 go into 10? Yes 2 times. So put point 0.2. So the answer to this is 3.2. Would expect you to be able to do those. Next one, simplify this ratio. And I would have expected you to get 1 to 4. First, work out the highest common factor of 6 and 24 is 6, and divide both sides of the ratio by 6. Right, let's move on to an introduction to what we're doing in this video. Consider the following um, question. Henry makes orange squash with one part orange squash to four parts water. Paul makes orange squash with one part orange squash to three parts water. Is Henry or Paul's squash sweeter to taste? Pause and have a think if you can work that out. Well, in Henry's case, okay, he's got one to four, one part orange to four parts water, and in Paul's case, he's going to have one part orange to three parts water. If you just think about that, if you're at the tap doing that, which one's going to be sweeter? Well, to me, it's obvious that this one's going to be sweeter. The reason is he's got less water in there, hasn't he? Every time he puts in one pot part of orange squash, only three parts of water. So this one's got more squash in it. It's going to be sweeter, right? So it was easy to compare because both of these numbers were one, right? And you can just then think about it really logically. But what if I asked you a puzzle like this? Similar puzzle, but I said Henry makes his squash with four parts orange to seven parts water. So four to seven, right? And Paul makes his with nine parts orange squash to 20 parts water. Now, which one's sweeter to taste now? Well, that's quite a hard question, isn't it, guys? Because I can't really compare them. These numbers aren't the same. That's four, that's nine. These aren't the same. So this is where it would be lovely if Henry's ratio was in the part one to something, all right? And Paul's was also in the ratio one to something. And then we could compare them like we did above. And that's why we put them in the form 1 to n or n to 1. That's what this is about, making one of the parts the same so you can easily compare a ratio. So let's start with that very skill and build up to this type of question. Express each ratio in the form 1 to n. Pause and have a go if you can. Well, to have it in the form 1 to n, I want this number to be 1. How did I get from 9 to 1? I divided by 9, didn't I? I would divide that by 9. So I must divide this side by 9 as well to preserve the ratio. And 18 divided by 9 is 2. There you go. What about this? I want that to be 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And I have to know what 6 divided by 4 is. Well, 6 divided by 4, I can simplify that. Divide top and bottom by 2. 3 divided by 2 and 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, right? So I could write that as 1 to 1.5. What about this one? I want that number to be 1 there, so I have to divide by 25. I've got to go away and work out 15 divided by 25. Let's simplify that. Divide top and bottom by um, 5. I would therefore get 3 out of 5. And we should know that 3 out of 5, well, we should know 1 fifth is 0 0.2. 2 fifths would be double that 0 0.4 and 3 fifths will be tripled that which would be 0 0.6 and the last one again I want that number to be 1 so I'm going to divide both sides by 8 and I have to know 5 divided by 8 so let's go over here and do 5 divided by 8 okay now does 8 go into 5 no so write 0 and then what you should do is put a decimal point here and put some zeros after it because we're going to go into the decimals now carry that 5 and ask yourself does 8 go into 50? Well, it does indeed, because 6 eighths are 48, so it goes in 6 times remainder 2. And does 8 go into 20? Uh, yes, it goes um, 2 times remainder 4. And does 8 go into 40? It does. It goes in 5 times. So 5 eighths is equal to 0 0.625. And going over here, 5 divided by 8 would give me 0 0.625, and I've got it in the right form. Next one. Pause, have a go. So this number here has to be 1. 
right? And I have to do 9 divided by 18. Well, I can simplify that, can't I? Divide top and bottom by 9, that's 1 over 2. And I know a half is 0 0.5. What about this time? I divide, if I want that to be 1, I must have divided by 6. So I do 4 divided by 6. And 4 divided by 6 simplifies to 2 thirds, which as a recurring decimal is 0 0.6 recurring. That's one of the ones you should know, so I'm going to leave it like that. This time here, I want this number to be 1, so I need to divide by 15. Hence, we need to work out 25 divided by 15. Let's try and simplify that. Divide top and bottom by 5. I get 5 over 3. And 5 over 3, that as a mixed number, is 1 and 2 two thirds like that. So one and two thirds as a decimal is 1.6 recurring like that. And the last one, um, I need this to be one there. So I need to do eight divided by five. I did divide that side um, by five there. And that's going to be give me one and three fifths. And I should know one and three fifths is 1.6. So that number should be 1.6. And we're done. Right, next one. Pause the video and have a go at this. So it says, Colin saves and spends his money in the ratio save to spend is five to four. Complete the following sentences. For every one pound Colin saves, he spends what? And for every one pound he spends, he saves what? It's basically asking us to put it in the form one to n and n to one. So let's just write that out. We know that save to spend, I'm gonna write it like that, is five to four, right? And in the first part, one pound he saves. We want the first number to be one, so I'm going to divide uh, both sides by five. Divide that by five, and four divided by five, we should know four divided by five is 0 0.8, okay? So one pound to 0 0.8 pounds, we can't write 0 0.8 pounds, you have to write 0 0.80 because it's money and it needs to be to 2DP. So there we go, like that. And in the other scenario, we want uh, for every one pound Colin spends, so we want the spend number to be one. I have to divide this by four. I must also divide that by four, and I need to go away and work out five over four, which is one and a quarter, and I know one and a quarter is 1.25. So therefore, this would be 1.25, and we're done. Okay, let's finish this video off with our opening puzzle. If you can do it, pause the video and have a go. Well, this tells us that Henry um, was making some squash, and he had it in the ratio of orange to water as four parts orange to seven parts water. And Paul was making squash and he had it in the ratio nine parts orange to 20 parts water. Now we want to know whose um, drink is sweeter to taste. It would be really easy to do this if one of these numbers was the same. We could either make both those numbers the same and one would be a great choice or both those numbers the same as well. So it depends which one you want to do. We'll do both, why not? Let's firstly make this number one. So if we make that number one, we've got to divide by four, right? And if we therefore do that, we have to do seven divided by four. Now we can go away and do this. Seven divided by four is one and three quarters, right? Which is 1.75, okay? So we've got that in that form. Now let's make this side one. We're gonna to have to divide by nine. So that would be one there. And we're going to have to go away here and do 20 divided by 9. We don't know that off the top of our heads, okay? But we do know it would be, as a, a mixed number, it would be um, 2 and um, 2 ninths. Now, you should know your ninths. Uh, 1 ninth is 0 0.1 recurring. 2 ninths is 0 0.2 recurring. So this is 2.2 recurring, right? So this would be 2.2 recurring like that. Now, all of a sudden, it's very easy for us to say which one's sweeter one part orange squash to 1.75 water, one part orange squash to 2.2 water. There's more water in here, so the drink is weaker. That means Henry's one must obviously be stronger. So we'll conclude Henry's is sweeter, therefore. There's more dilute to uh, water in it. Now, just to show you, you could have done it the other way and made both those numbers one. Let's have a go at that. So imagine we wanted to make this number one. So we're going to divide by seven, and we'd have to divide this one by seven as well. Now, four divided by seven, you could go away and work it out longhand. I'm just going to use the cal calculator just for this point and say it's 0 0.57 to 2 dp, rounding it, okay? If I wanted to make this side one, I would divide both sides by 20, right? 
So I divide by 20, I must divide this side by 20 here. Now you could work out that longhand, I'm just gonna tap it in the calculator and say that's 0 0.45. Now this is where you've got to think super carefully here. This is saying every one part water, 0 0.57 orange squash. Every one part water, 0 0.45 orange squash. This one has more orange for every one part water. So Henry's must be stronger, or sweeter even, stronger or sweeter, okay? And we just got to be super careful in that case, depending on which way you did it. In this case here, if you've got one, you, this case here, because the orange is both one part, you look at which one's got more water. Which, the one with more water is therefore not sweeter. So Henry's is sweeter here. And in this case here, if you make the number of water one, then you look for which one's got more orange in it. And Henry's again had more orange, so therefore it's sweeter. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.